There are very rare occasions when people can see a new volcano emerging from virtually nowhere. Considered by some as one of the seven wonders of the natural world, Perry Kutin Volcano is undoubtedly one of the wonderful geomorphological landscapes of the globe. Deriving its name from the Puropicha or Tarascan language, which means to the other side, the birth of this volcano in the 20th century revealed the Amazon secrets of the deep earth. Pericutin is located in the Mexican municipality of Nuevo Paraganiquitiro, Mijocan, 29 kilometers west of the city of Europan and about 322 kilometers west of Mexico City. It lies on the northern flank of Pico d'Antensiataro, which itself lies on top of an old shield volcano and extends 3,170 meters above sea level and 424 meters above the valley of Quizocho Kirisuru. Pericutin Volcano was born on a Mexican cornfield owned by Dionisio Pulido a farmer who saw vapor emanating from a hollow and shortly afterwards witnessed the beginning of a unique event of a volcano being created. The first morphological feature associated with the birth of Pericutin Volcano was perhaps the formation of a small depression around a pre-existing pit of 5 meters diameter and 1.5 meters depth in Dionisio Polito's cornfield in August 1942. Fifteen days before the actual birth of the volcano on the 20th of February 1943, high seismic activity, subterranean noise, and tremors were registered in the San Juan Parangari Cutiro area. The eruption began on February 20th, 1943 at about 4 p.m. local time, and Dionisio Polito and his family were the first witnesses. Pericutin erupted from 1943 to 1952 and with several eruptive phases. For weeks prior, residents of the area reported hearing noises similar to thunder but without clouds in the sky. This sound is consistent with deep earthquakes caused by the movement of magma. A later study indicated that the eruption was preceded by 21 earthquakes over 3.2 in intensity starting five weeks before the eruption. One week prior to the eruption, newspapers reported 25 to 30 per day. The day before the eruption, the number was estimated at 300. During that day, he and his family had been working their land, clearing it to prepare for spring planting. Suddenly, the ground nearby swelled upward and formed a fissure between 2 and 2.5 meters across. They reported that they heard hissing sounds and smoke that smelled like rotten eggs, indicating the presence of hydrogen sulfide. Within hours, the fissure would develop into a small crater. Polito reported, At 4 p.m., I left my wife to set fire to a pile of branches when I noticed that a crack, which was situated on one of the knolls of my farm, had opened, and I saw that it was a kind of fissure that had a depth of only half a meter. I set about to ignite the branches again, and when I felt a thunder, 
the trees trembled, and I turned to speak to Paula. And it was then I saw how, in the hole, the ground swelled and raised itself 2 or 2.5 meters high, and a kind of smoke or fine dust, gray like ashes, began to rise up in a portion of the crack that I had not previously seen. Immediately more smoke began to rise with a hiss or whistle, loud and continuous, and there was a smell of sulfur. He tried to find his family and oxen, but they had disappeared. So he rode his horse to town, where he found his family and friends happy to see them alive. The volcano grew fast and furiously after this. Celedonio Gutierrez, who witnessed the eruption on the first night, reported, When night began to fall, we heard noises like the surge of the sea, and red flames of fire rose into the darkened sky, some rising 800 meters or more into the air, that burst like golden marigolds and rain like fireworks fell to the ground. During the volcano's nine years of activity, scientists sketched and mapped it and took thousands of samples and photographs. By 1952, the eruption had left a 424-meter-high cone and significantly damaged an area of more than 233 square kilometers with the ejection of stone, volcanic ash, and lava. Three people were killed, two towns were completely evacuated and buried by lava, and three others were heavily affected. Hundreds of people had to permanently relocate, and two new towns were created to accommodate their migration. 
Despite the ongoing Second World War, the eruption drew attention from around the world, with reporters from newspapers and magazines, including Life, coming to cover the story. Airline pilots pointed the volcano out to passengers, and one Hollywood film, Captain from Castile, was shot in the area, using the erupting volcano as a backdrop and employing locals as extras. The volcano has become a tourist attraction, with the main access in Anguahan, from which the volcano is clearly visible. The town offers guides and horses both to visit the ruins of the San Juan Perengeri Katiro Church as well as to climb the volcano itself. Currently, the crater of the volcano is about 200 meters across and it is possible to both climb the volcano and walk around the entire perimeter. Although classified as extinct by scientists, Perikutan is still hot and seeping rainwater reacts with this heat so that the cone still emits steam in various streams. The forces that created the volcano are still active. In 1997, there was a vigorous swarm of 230 earthquakes in the Perikutan area due to tectonic movement, with 5 above 3.9 on the moment magnitude scale. There were also some reports of rumbling in 1995 and of black steam and rumbling in 1998. In the summer of 2006, there was another major volcanic earthquake swarm with over 300 located near the volcano, indicating magma movement, but with no eruption at Perikutin or elsewhere.